Welcome back to our next edition of Myth Badger videos. In this video, we're going to take a look at gear ratios. We're going to try to understand how to calculate gear ratios and the importance they have on both speed and torque in a gear system. So I've got a simple gear here, and in my simple gear, I've used two gears of the same size. Both of them are 60 tooth gears. I've marked my input as this, where the handle is, so this is where I put power into the system. So let's look at some of the terms. First, gear ratio. Gear ratio is the relationship between the input gear and the output gear. There are two ways to calculate gear ratio. We can calculate it based on the diameter of the gear, or we can calculate it based on the number of teeth. Either one works, but when doing so, our formula would say that the gear ratio is equal to the number of teeth on the output divided by the number of teeth on the input. We could also say the diameter of the output divided by the diameter of the input. Either way is how we can calculate gear ratio. Now gear ratio also helps us to figure out a relationship between speed and torque. So going back to science a little bit, speed is the amount of distance we cover in a given amount of time, and torque is the amount of force applied in a circular direction. So when we examine gear ratio, we are putting speed and torque, or applying speed and torque, at the input, at the input. When we examine the gear ratio, it's going to tell us how much speed and torque we get from the output. So right now, if I look at this, we have 60 tooth gear. So the output divided by the input is 60 divided by 60 which means I have a one-to-one -one gear ratio. Using these piece of papers as markers, what that means is if I turn this input one rotation, I should get one rotation out of the output. And from what we see, that seems to match. They're, notice they're both going at the exact same speed, or the speed is one-to-one. -one. This also means the torque is one-to-one -one in a sense because the amount of torque that I put into the system is the amount of torque I get out. Same for speed. So a one-to-one -one gear ratio means that what I put in is what I get out. Not a big deal. Um, it's useful if that's actually what you want, but you need to spread things out a little bit. But typically when dealing with gear ratios, we want to kind of see what happens when those numbers are not the same. So to do that, let's take a gear out of the system. So we're going to take this larger gear out, and we're going to replace it with a smaller gear over here on the other side. And this smaller gear only has 12 teeth instead of 60. So that's going to be important for us because now the number of teeth is changing. So let's put our handle on and make this our input. Now we have 12 here and 60 here. This is my input, so 60 in our formula goes on top, 12 on the bottom. 60 divided by 12 equals 5, which means I have a 5 to 1 gear ratio. Now for the gear itself, that means 5 rotations of the handle is going to get me 1 rotation here. So we'll do that again. So let's get that back up here at the top. If you watch carefully, this one has to turn five times in order to get one rotation here. One, two, three, four, and five. We're back up here at the starting spot. So five rotations here to get one there. We have a five to one ratio. If I switch this to the other side, however, and I make this my input, now we need to reverse the formula. 12 is my output, so 12 divided by 60 means 1 fifth, or 1 to 5. That means one rotation of my input is going to get me five rotations of the output. And we see that that holds true. Okay, so what does that mean in terms of speed and torque in a system like this? Well, for that, it probably helps if we think about it in terms of a bike. So let's imagine that our pedals are here. 
and the other end of the gear is attached to the back tire. So I'm going to attach this sprocket here so we can visually see what we're doing. I have a 1 to 5 gear ratio, which means that I'm going to turn this one once and I get 5 turns out of this. That's great if you want speed because you only have to turn the pedals once, but you're getting a lot of turns of that back tire, which is directly connected to the small gear. So if this is um, if we have the gears shifted so that we're getting speed, watch this back tire as I turn this. Look how fast that's going. One rotation here, and this thing was just flying. That's how we get speed out of the system. In a bike, that means if you're on flat ground and you want to get going with the higher speed, you want the largest gear on the front where your pedals are, and you want a smaller gear on the back tire. So that that way, when you turn this, you can get a lot of speed out of it. But let's say you hit a hill. And when you hit that hill, suddenly those tires are much harder to turn. And they're much harder to turn because it's geared for speed right now. And what we want is we want it geared to torque. We want it geared for torque so that that way you get more push against the ground as you're going uphill. To do that, I need to switch to my, I need to shift the gears so that this is now in front and this is in the back. I want my largest gear on the back tire and I want my um, smallest gear on my pedals. So if we're simulating our system here, here's my tire. Now, when I rotate this, and you know, just to help us out, let's Let's put a little marker here so we can see what we're doing. That way you can actually see the rotation. Okay, so I now have my pedals back here. I want to go uphill. I'm now geared for torque. I'm going to get more circular force pushing against the ground. So it's going to be um, pushing uphill. So I'm pushing uphill. And to do that, we find that in this way, I'm sacrificing speed. I'm not getting as many turns in that back tire, but I'm getting more force out of it. It also means that this thing is almost gliding. The pedals are very, very easy to turn compared to the other, system, the other method we had where we're geared for speed. So it means less energy in my legs. I'm going to tire out a lot slower than if I were switched over and turning this one. If I'm geared for speed, I'm going to wear myself out trying to go uphill. If I'm geared for torque, I can conserve energy while getting uphill. And at the top of the hill, I then shift gears around back to this, and I can get going with my speed again. So understand, if I want increased speed, I sacrifice torque. If I want increased torque, I sacrifice speed. And on a bike, speed means my largest gear is connected to the pedals. Torque, my largest gear is connected to the back wheel. So that concludes our examination of speed and torque and gear ratios. Feel free to hit that subscribe button if you want to keep up with all future tutorials here at Myth Badger Videos.